Hello again folks, first of all apologies for the lack of videos over the last couple of weeks I've been extremely busy with work and indeed I've been working away from home for the last week or so and I've simply not had a chance to get anything uh, made or uploaded so yeah apologies for that I can tell you I do have a couple of videos in production if I can use that phrase uh, one of which is a rather fantastic giveaway so please do stay tuned for that Anyway, on to tonight's random video. This came about because I watched uh, Big Clive's question and answer video last night. Uh, so in that video, he made an LED lamp uh, whilst answering questions that had been left by his viewers and subscribers. And one of the questions he was asked was, uh, do you update your own website? And Clive basically went on to explain that... Um, Yes, he did. It was a really basic website uh, with low, low resolution pictures and, and, you know, the minimal amount of code, etc, etc. Um, and it was like that because it was made back in the day when we used dial up. And it kind of got me reminiscing, if you can reminisce about uh, dial up. Um, the reason I've got a, a Commodore Amiga A1200 here is um, because my first uh, introduction to the online experience if you will it was not on the internet it wasn't the world wide web when i went online i used to use a commodore amiga brilliant computer um they're absolutely fantastic um if you've never had one you really should go out and buy one and, and just enjoy it they're fantastic computers anyway i had one of these uh, in the early 90s <clears throat> and uh, yeah well before the world wide web and to go online, you had to use a modem and have a telephone line. And, you know, there was no web browsers or anything like that. You had to call into or dial into what they call a bulletin board service, a BBS. Now, if you don't know what a BBS or you're unfamiliar with BBS, um, you may, we may well be familiar with Teletext, which uh, if you're from the UK, you probably will know. Um, if you're not from the UK, Teletext was um, a service provided by the, the mainstream channels here in the UK. So the British Broadcasting Corporation and um, ITV, or it's you know one of its previous subsidiaries. And um, you basically pressed a button on your remote and it allowed you to bring up information um, you know, text-based information on your television set over the TV antenna. Now, that could be as simple as uh, weather information, you know, the weather forecast. It could be news headlines, TV listings, that kind of thing. Um, but you also had simple games. Um, there used to be a game on, what was it? I think it was on Channel 4's uh, service. Um, uh, what was it called? Quiz game. Bamboo, bamboozled, 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 something like that. But yeah, it was yeah, just a really basic game, and it was all uh, the graphics are all done with ASCII characters and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, <clears throat> essentially that's what a BBS looked like. You you connect your modem to your Amiga or Atari, whatever computer system you used. You dialed into a remote computer, and it brought up a text page. You know, as I say. ASCII text characters um, and it would have like uh, documents you could download very very basic text files uh, and things like that no sort of you know content on there in terms of photographs or you know embedded music or moving images or videos literally a text a page of text imagine uh, typing into notepad or wordpad on your, your windows pc and you know making it black and white and that's essentially what it looked like really really basic i'm kind of digressing here I, you know so <laughs> that was 1990 something quite a few years ago uh, later on i moved on to pc and of course we had dial up and that's what clive was talking about so his site was designed to be really basic so that it loaded up quick on the internet connection of the day and basically hasn't changed it since of course last time i used um dial up like many of you will be probably around you know 15 years ago or so around 2002 2003 something like that because um, that's when DSL came in, when we had our 256 and 512k connections. Uh, maybe I, it was IDSN? I can't remember what it was before that. 
um, something like that. Um, but yeah, then of course we moved to ADSL when we had our 8 megabyte connections and stuff like that. And of course nowadays everybody's on fibre, or most places are on fibre these days with you know a sort of minimum connection about 76 megabytes per second. Um, you know, really, you know, a quantum leap in terms of, you know, speed, uh, you know, to to reminisce about dial-ups, like reminiscing about the time when you got chicken pox, I suppose, <laughs> you know, this, it was just horrific. Ask anybody if they remember dial-up and there's a, generally a, a, a pause and then the, uh, yeah, they just go, yeah, it was rubbish. Anyway, again, digressing. So, I watched Big Clive's video. Uh, Started reminiscing at dial up, thought to myself, I've not seen a modem, a you know, a dial up modem for years and years and years. Do they still make them? X, Y, and Z. Um but today I dropped my daughter off at her friend's house for a sleepover, and because my wife wasn't there, I decided to go to the car boot sale because she never lets me go because apparently I keep buying rubbish. But the very first stall I went to at the car boot sale had this uh, line in the box. Now, I never opened it. I just thought, well, I picked it up and it was heavy. And I thought, I just said, oh, how much you want for this, pal? And the guy goes, oh, they don't work anymore. Um, well, a quid. I was like, all right, I'll have that for a quid. Bought it. And, um, yeah, as I was walking back to the car, opened up the box to have a look inside. And it's brand spanking new. Got a serial cable here, 25 to 9 pin serial cable. We've got uh, US and UK uh, phone line connections. We've got the power adapter. Never had the cable tie off it there, a tie up, whatever you want to call it. And of course, we've got the modem itself, along with the uh, installation CD and instruction manual. So, what I thought I'd do with it uh, when I saw it, because I was really surprised to see it, it uh, was you know, maybe hook it up or attempt to hook it up to a modern uh, Windows based machine and see if we can connect to the internet as it is now, um, the information superhighway, I think, as it was branded back in the day, and see if we can get on a website and see how quickly it loads up and actually see how quickly Big Clive's uh, website loads up on this 56k modem. Um, we'll have a quick look around this uh, and then I'll stop the video and I'll try and get set up on the laptop. Um, on the back we've obviously got our serial connection here. We've got the line in and power and on the left hand side of the box we've got a nice clicky mechanical power switch. On the front we've got four LEDs. <coughs> Excuse me. We've got RD and SD, that is receive data and sending data. And of course when um, data has been transferred those should probably flash on all the time. Uh, we've got power and we've got CD there. And what CD stands for is carrier detect. Um, that was That is basically uh, once the modem has connected to the remote modem or the remote server um, and the line is, uh, you know, synchronized and connected and the protocol is all being set and all that good stuff. Um, that line, uh, so that light should become solid to see you've got a connection. And then of course, as we start transferring data uh, on that duplex connection, um, these two LEDs should flick it away. So there we go. Um, I've only got one problem uh, and that is my laptop doesn't have a serial port. Of course, back in the day on the old Amiga, we had a dedicated serial port. And of course, PCs, uh, you know, it's only in the last couple of years or so um, that you haven't seen serial ports on, uh, you know, mainstream motherboards. You can still buy motherboards that have a built-in COM port or serial port, but they're few and far between these days. Um, so without having a dedicated port, I'm going to have to use some form of adapter. And this is the one I'm going to be using. It's a PL2303. Um, USB to RS-232 um, adapter cable and essentially inside the USB plug here is a uh, well it's a PL2303 uh, chipset and that converts USB to uh, serial data so we're going to have the computer the data uh, coming into this adapter here being converted to serial data which is then going into the modem modem by uh, of interest if you don't know stands for modulate demodulate uh, so that is going to be uh, modulating and demodulating 
the serial data into data that can be transferred across a protocol over <clears throat> a landline telephone line and um, basically being reconverted at the other end uh, so we can get that data flow going. Right, 10 minutes exactly in. Um, I know I've been rambling here. Uh, that's just a quick premise of what we're actually going to do and how it came about. So I will stop the video here. I will get this hopefully set up on the laptop and then I'll come back to you when we're ready to test the dial-up connection. I'll catch you in just a moment. Probably about an hour, I'd imagine. <laughs> See you in a second. Okay, well that's the modem installed. The uh, supply CD, which probably dates back to early 2000, worked perfectly on Windows 10. Didn't have to download anything at all. Um, but just a quick talk through, as you can see, Wi-Fi is turned off. I've got no Ethernet uh, connection to the laptop currently, only the USB to RS-232 converter, serial cable into the modem, and the phone line and power leads into said modem. So what we're gonna have to do now is um, basically set up a dial-up connection. So if you press the Windows key and type and dial, that will come up with the uh, change dial up settings. Just press enter and it'll allow us to set up a new connection. So we want the top option, connect to the internet, set up a broadband or um, dial-up uh, connection to the internet. We're gonna click next, click dial-up. And I just googled um, for free UK dial-up services and one came up called freedialup.net, I think it was. And that's uh, 08445352000. The username is free and the password is dial-up. Okay, so we will uh, just check with those boxes and see if it works. So it says it's dialing. Open the phone line. So now we'll start polling the remote computer. Our um, carrier detect and receive and send data lights eliminated. Test the internet connection. Now connected to the internet. Happy days. So if we click close, and we can close that down now. And if we look down the bottom corner, we should have, yeah, we've got a network icon now. I can't find my mouse because I'm trying to look through the camera. There we go. Dial up connection connected. Let's go to Chrome and see just how quick BigClive.com loads. I have deleted the cache and files just so this is a real example of how slow it is. And then we'll wait. Incidentally, um, I don't think there's any way of checking, other than doing a speed test, checking how fast your connection is on dial-up on Windows 10. It literally just says uh, connected. And there we go, there's uh, Clive's website. Um, let's go to his shop and have a look. So there we go. And you can see as you will fondly remember, building up each image. I think Clive said these were 320 by 240 each, so very small by today's standards, but yeah, you can see the, the slowly building. Do you remember we used to scroll up and down, uh, hoping that the pictures would be loaded by the time you get back up to the top, or was that just me? But there we go, folks. That is, uh, yeah, a Windows 10 uh, computer laptop, modern laptop, using a 56K dial-up modem in 2018 to have a look at bigclive.com. Thanks for watching. 
Um, if you have any questions or uh, comments, of course, pop them down below. If you haven't already done so and you'd like to do so, click on my fat head down here. Um, and as always, take care of yourselves and all the best.